Today, I'm going to tell you about a technology that will shape the future of our education. In the beginning, I would like to ask you, going back to your school days in your mind, and think about how did you feel? How did you feel about sitting the whole day, like you're doing right now? How did you feel about listening to physics, mathematics, biology, chemistry, and so on? And you find it interesting. You get the information, you get the knowledge, but often it is difficult to get the concept, to understand the concept behind the knowledge. How did you feel about reading or listening stories, and again, you're able to get the information, to get the knowledge, but it is hard sometimes to see through the eyes of the people who actually experienced those stories. In our schools, we get a lot of knowledge. Here, you can see it here. And over the last decades, this knowledge increased and improved a lot, which is very good. But often, we miss one important point. Attaining knowledge is not the same as learning. Because attaining knowledge can simply be done by memorizing information, but there is no guarantee that you can actually use this knowledge. By learning, you're able to create skills in problem solving, and you are really able to use this knowledge in a productive way. And before I show you this technology that will shape the future of our education, I would like to introduce you to a special group of people on our planet Earth that could be called master learners. I'm talking about children. Because if you watch children, you can see that they often learn and observe the environment in a slightly different way than we usually would do it if we want to learn something. And they do this by mainly three factors. Of course, there are a lot of different values when we want to learn something effectively, but especially those three factors are important when we learn something new. And interesting enough, those three factors are also highly covered by a lot of studies that show that those three values lead to effective learning. The first one is attention. And I hope you have the attention right now. This attention is really important. And when you watch children, they are highly, highly focused on one specific task. They don't scatter around different things. They are not multitasking. They don't think about tomorrow or what they did yesterday. They are highly focused what they're doing right now and they are also highly motivated to do this specific task. So attention, if it is used right and in the right way, is very powerful. Second one, interaction. When you watch children, they are interacting with everything around them, with their completely environment, with the objects around them, and also by communicating with everything and using language but they do some slightly different way in interacting because they try out different things. That's what we're missing in schools often. They experiment. They find out and reflect what different behaviors lead to different results. That's the power of interaction and using it to explore, to experiment with your environment and what is in it. Last but not least, the last one is pretty obvious, seeing and hearing. But, of course, we use all senses when we learn something, but especially our auditory 
and visual senses play a major role when we learn something. And kids, children, they use these senses in a very powerful way because they think and imagine things in a very creative way. And this is also some kind of exploration. So by those three factors, we can learn effectively. Fortunately, last year, I was able to go to Tokyo and attain an internship at the Tokyo University of Science, and I had the opportunity to speak to some very incredible people. And through a lot of conversations, I learned about this new technology, and I experienced and I discovered that this technology will have a major impact on those three factors, and therefore in effective learning. And the technology I'm talking about, I'm finally introducing it to you, is this. There's, of course, something missing. That's what I'm seeing. So I'm talking about virtual reality. And some of you might already experience virtual reality before, but for those of you who don't, you can see it here. It's basically a device you're wearing, and you're able to see a 3D environment, but you're not limited to one direction. You can actually look around. You can turn your head, as you can see, and you can dive into any 3D environment and can interac uh, interact with two controllers, like you can see here, and by that, you're able to go into any environment and in can interact with almost any objects in there. So, to give you some insights, what is actually possible with this technology, I want to show you some examples. And for that, I would like you to ask one more time to go back in your school days, in your mind, and think about and imagine what would be possible if we could use such kind of device in our daily education. First of all, you could already see here, I'm at the Ota Regensburg, in the campus here, where we are right now, and I'm able to look around, I'm able to discover the environment, and I'm even able to go into our new building and to dive into the location and look around. It's like I'm there, and it really feels like if you are in virtual reality. It feels really you are there as in reality. This is all possible with almost any place on planet Earth. For example, here I'm able to go to the second tallest building on our planet, the Tokyo Sky Tree in Japan. And again, I'm able to dive into the location and I'm able to discover and see as I'm standing there in real life. Think about what would be possible if we can use such kind of device in our daily education. For example, in ge geography. Before you learn some boring things about a city, how much people live in there, and a lot of bunch of other things you're absolutely not interested in, you can dive into the location and really can learn how it feels like when you are there. Or what would be possible if you can even go to places that are usually not able to go at all? For example, here I'm able to visit the International Space Station, and again, I'm able to look around, I'm able to discover the environment, and it, you really get a sense how it really might feel if you are an astronaut and being at the ISS. Think about physics, and you imagine what would be possible if you can visit the solar system, and you can really see and feel how the planets in our solar system work, how the different sizes are. Think about what t explaining time that would save if we just dive into that. Like, when you learn it in school, they talk hours about this, and you're just able to dive in with virtual reality, and you can learn it in about, like, two minutes, and you know everything about the solar system. Think about biology or even med medical science, when you're able to see organs right in front of you, and you're able to really feel how they work. I was astonished if I, as, when I saw this application at first. Like, I did, saw it like two weeks ago, and I was like, I know so much more about my body right now. Like, I never learned this in school. 
And it's just amazing how you can really feel how it works when you see it before you, and you can look around and you can discover it yourself. So that is the power of virtual reality. And I really want to show you more examples because it's very exciting to show them. But uh, I actually want to really show you that virtual reality will, an will have an impact in our future education. And to start by that, we should ask the question if virtual reality will re really come more in the future of our daily lives and also after that into our education. Therefore, let's look at some data. This is an estimation of the International Data Corporation, and they made a forecast that virtual reality will grow over the next few years. And this very fast. You can see here with the growth rate that over every year, there is a growth of more than 100%. So this is doubled every year. And when you think about a technology we have already right now, our smartphones, and we go back to the year 2007, the release of the iPhone. And we look at this growth rate of smartphones. Pretty similar, right? So we can expect that virtual reality will come in the next few years. So we now know it will come. The question is, how can we really use it in our daily education in our classrooms? And the first one is very obvious. If you discovered virtual reality yourself, or you saw the examples right now, the first one is discovering. Of course, you're able to go anywhere you want, on any place on planet Earth. You can go to places you're usually not able to go, and you can create even completely new environments at all. For example, the solar system, that wouldn't be possible in reality, right? Or going into a human body, yeah, it's not really possible. So in virtual reality, you can do almost anything. That's the power of discovering things in virtual reality. The next one is pretty similar, but it's more about objects in virtual reality. Because you're not only able to create any environment you want, you're actually able to create any object you want, and you can interact with them. So for example, in physics or chemistry, when you think back to your school days, how were those experiments you did? Like sometimes it was pretty exciting, but yeah, most of the time, like you didn't really learn about much about those experiments. In virtual reality, you can do any experiment, no matter how dangerous it is, or how expensive it is, or maybe it's even not possible in reality. In virtual reality, you can do all that at the same time, because everything is possible. This one is powerful. Because when you think about distance learning, you can imagine it like that. You're sitting in a room like you're doing right now, only that it is virtual and put on the internet. By that, every person on planet Earth would be able to visit this room in order to attend lessons, lectures, discussions, and much more that would make everyone here able to attend any education all over the world than you can ever imagine. And this will have an incredible benefit for people that live in poor countries. Because as you know, the educational structure in poor countries and the availability, the not availability of teachers in poor countries is a real problem. And only by an internet connection and on simple virtual reality device, any person in a poor country will be able to attend any education they want to. So this will make a huge impact on our global education. So we learned about that virtual reality will come, and we learned about how we can use it. There's one more major question that's left that you probably already thought about. Should we really use it? Should we really use virtual reality in our daily lives or the education? And this is a question that is highly discussed. Because when you think about a virtual room 
or a virtual environment and your ability to dive into that, there are some concerns. Because if you think about this virtual room and you're able to go anywhere you want, you can do anything you want, it is pretty easy to lose connection to reality. It's also possible that you lose social contacts and that you reduce your amount of physical activity. When we think about those issues, we come probably to a point where we say, should we put virtual reality completely away? Should we do that? Of course, I don't think so. When you think more, one more time about those problems, you come to a point that you think, oh, that's what we are already facing in our today's life with our current technology. So this is not a problem about virtual reality. That's a problem of our healthy use of all technologies. So in order to solve those kind of issues, we th should think more about the awareness to those problems and educate our children and also adults about the awareness to those issues so we can create a healthy use of every technology, including virtual reality. Of course, <laughs> This whole topic about virtual reality and using it in education is still pretty futuristic. I admit that. But you saw that virtual reality will come in the next few years. And it will appear in our daily lives and also in education. And since education is our future, because our children will create our future and they get the education, education is our future. It is our responsibility to see the opportunities of new technologies like virtual reality, create a healthy use, and including them into our educational system so we can create an incredible learning experience for our children so they can create the best possible future, our future, the future of humankind. Thank you.